And welcome to some more EMF induction. Today we're going to talk about uh, if you have a coil within a field, how the EMF gets induced when you spin it, which leads us to then how an AC electricity generator works. And then we'll talk about what happens when you spin it much faster. So take a look at this coil that we have here. And this coil is allowed to spin around, and it's in between two different poles of a magnet. And what you need to imagine is that this magnet has field lines that are cutting this way across the coil. And if this coil is allowed to spin, we get some cool things happen. Let me uh, make myself bigger on your screen. So let's pretend that I've got field lines that are coming through the page right towards your face. And I've got this coil here. It's got a lot of flux right now because it's all going through. As I spin it like this, now it's got no flux. And you can think, as the coil spins through this way, this is cutting through a lot of field lines and changing a lot of flux. So when it spins this way and cuts through the lines, you get a huge amount of voltage, or EMF. As it's like this and spinning through this way, it's not changing the amount of flux. It's pretty much going to be at maximum flux either way, so you get minimal voltage, or EMF. So as it spins, whenever it's cutting through the maximum lines, big EMF. When it's not cutting through many lines, zero EMF. Now this spinning coil within a field is important because this is actually how most power generating plants will generate current or electricity and end up with the alternating current that we get in most of our houses, which is at 110 volts, uh, maybe in the US, and 220 volts um, here in the Philippines or in many other places. So let's say that we've got these coils, and this is showing the orientation of the coils right here. And just to help you remember, let's assume that we have magnetic field lines that are cutting across here. And these angles are telling you the angle between the plane of the coil and the magnetic field lines. So let's say that, as in this picture here, the coil's flat and it's parallel to the field lines. As it turns, it's going to cut through them, so you've got a giant voltage. Then, in this 90 degree one, as it's perpendicular to them, it's not cutting through many field lines. Zero EMF. It's flipped over. It's going to start cutting through the field lines again. Big EMF, but now it's of the opposite sign. And then once it's perpendicular again, zero. Once it's with those field lines again, you're going to get some massive field. And then this pattern keeps repeating over and over and over and you'll see that the voltage you get or the EMF looks like this you get an alternating EMF your current will also be alternating and that's why we get what we get from power plants now this next part's easy it's just asking what happens if you spin the coil faster so let's say we're taking this coil and we're spinning it just at a normal rate. Well, if this is our EMF and this is time, we are gonna get a normal graph just like that. If we take this coil and we're like, whoa, let's spin it like crazy, then you can probably guess you are gonna have a higher frequency of the EMF oscillating, or the current oscillating, but you can also think, as it goes through here, it's cutting through field lines faster. And that's a faster rate of change, of flux. And if you remember from our laws on uh, Faraday's laws, the rate of change of flux directly relates to the voltage. So we are going to have much higher voltages at a higher frequency. So if you're generating power, and you're turning a crank to spin coils, spin it faster. You get a higher frequency of oscillations, 
and bigger voltages. That's it.